You know, it's it's tough when it feels like you're going through something alone and, and no one understands and, you know, uh, no one's there for you. And it's just like, you know, you're a man, especially a black man. They're like, oh, he's, you know, he's tough. He's strong. But you know, but, you know, it was a couple, a year and a half crying myself to sleep every night. You know, it's it's tough when it feels like you're going through something alone and, and no one understands and, you know, uh, no one's there for you. And it's just like, you know, you're a man, especially a black man. Like, oh, he's, you know, he's tough. He's strong. But you know, but, you know, it was a couple, a year and a half crying myself to sleep every night. You know, nobody see that. Yeah. Nobody see that. Yeah. You know, like, you know, you, you, you live five minutes away from your babies, you know what I'm saying? Because people who know Corey Hardrick know that his kids and his family was everything to yeah. him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm stronger than I thought I was. Yes. I'm really stronger. And that, by the grace, by the grace of God, by the grace of God, it's like I'm here and I'm still going. So of course we know this is Corey Hardrick, who is the ex-husband of Tia Maori Hardrick. Um, you know, Tia Maori known for Sister Sister and, you know, um, the TV show The Game and all of those things. And, you know, I, I, I thought it was very important to insert that clip of her talking about graduating from her marriage. Because I think that we also have to, um, you know, speak on a lot of uh, the decisions that a lot of women make in the demise or the separation of their marriages and their families because of things like the spark is gone because oh you know I've uh, you know decided that I no longer want to be in this situation I miss the streets or I didn't get to experience too much and we always talk about um, the woman and, and what the woman does and how she feels and there's always people cheerleading her yes sis you know choose you you get to live your life for you yeah you know you don't have to give your life to a man and you know be who whatever identity it is to be a wife and uh, to take care of children yeah you have to live for you you have to be happy as well but they never talk about the full dynamics of how that is, uh, affects the other party in the situation what i find is that especially in the sisterhood okay especially in the sisterhood a lot of women, if a woman, um, if a man decides that he does not want to be with his wife anymore, which is very rare, we know that women are the ones who file for divorce. But if a man decides that he does not want to be with his wife anymore, um, take, for example, the situation that happened with Jeannie Mai and Jeezy, women will flock to her side. Oh my gosh, how horrible. Why would he tear apart his family? What a horrible man. I can't believe he did this. I can't believe he would, you know, uh, do these things. How selfish, you know, what a disgusting man. We loathe this man. We can't stand him. In the same uh, breath, if a woman decides to walk away from her family, they're like, yes, sis, do you, we support you. Why is it that we never talk about what happens? And again, the, the implications it leaves on the entire family unit when a woman decides that she want to be a hot girl again, she want to go on social media and flaunt it all. You know, she want to, uh, you know, be a part of all the single girls and what they got going on. And she no longer wants to be under the regime of her husband or her spouse. Again, we don't know the actual details of exactly what ruined their relationship or what broke up the relationship. But here we say this is a man who was communicating and talking about basically the fight of trying to keep himself together after this. This is this means that this man wanted to be there. He wanted to stay there. He wanted to maintain in her, in her life. He wanted to remain married. So while she, you know, runs off, breaks up the marriage and is gallivanting all over social media, then coming back crying, talking about how hard it is in the dating world. This man is talking about how broken he was during that situation. How, you know, now I can't see my children 24-7 because we all know that how the court system is set up that most of the time the children are going to get most of the time with their mother in the same household you know, because they don't want to change the child's environment. They don't want to change, you know, their schooling or their routine. Now he's on the outskirts and has to adjust to a new lifestyle. Again, based off of just from what we know so far, the graduation or, you know, I no longer 
fit in this situation. He no longer fit the me that evolved. I want to say this, right? I think that it's vital that if somebody does not want to be in a relationship anymore, the best thing that they could do is communicate that situation, right? Um, that's I want to say that wholeheartedly. The best thing that you could do if you don't want to be with somebody is not waste their time and be 100% honest with them about how you feel so that you can free them of, of the chains and the shackles of being with somebody who does not want to be with you because if a person's in a relationship they don't want to be in, they are a misery to the household, they, they have an attitude problem, they're disrespectful, and nobody wants to deal with that. However, I think that a lot of women move off of impulse, emotion, temporary feelings, feelings that are fleeting. A lot of women watch what everybody else got going on and what everybody else is doing. The grass always seems greener. A lot of women feed into the narratives that are pushed towards them or they see what other people do. You know, maybe their, their mother gets divorced and, and they see the, the change within their mother and they take a page out of that book and they, they want to do the same thing and replicate the same thing and have the same quote unquote freedom. And a lot of women take, take the time and they work on themselves, quote unquote, separately from their marriage. They're going to therapy by themselves. They're, they're, uh, you know, they're getting life coaches by themselves. They're working on self-development alone. And they're not incorporating the family unit. So how can you expect you guys to grow together if you are purposefully growing separately outside of your relationship? Where's the union? Where's the unity? The unison in a marriage, in a commitment is so vital. You have a lot of people who are in relationships, who are in marriages, who are not even in the same book. You know, we can't even talk about being on the same page because they're not even in the same book. They're talking about, oh, yeah, you know, let, let, let's look at page three. They're both looking at page three in two very different books. The togetherness. Yes, you know, yes, it's important for any party. You're an individual. Yes, it's very important for you to be, your, you know, your own self, to take time for yourself, to make sure that you are, uh, you know, feeding yourself the right things um, when it comes to knowledge, you know, spirituality, food, uh, you're working out, you're taking care of yourself. Yes, it's, it's, it's important for you to be a whole human being by yourself. However, the same emphasis that a lot of these women are putting into that whole uh, human being as one person, they're not putting any effort into the marriage and in the unit. They're not doing it. Hence why we see a lot of women walking away from marriages constantly and then a couple months or, you know, years down the line, we see them boohoo and crying. And then eventually we see the man move on and he's fine and he's in a long-term commitment. Because he was logical in the process, he grieved dur during the process, he went through the emotions, and then he moved forward. Whereas a lot of women just move fast, don't think it all the way through, and then, and then you know, reality strikes and they're like, oh man, wait. How am I going to find somebody who's going to take care of my kids or love my kids the same way that their father did? How is that going to be possible? Oh, wait, how am I going to, you know, find somebody who aligns with me and pushes me to be my best self? How am I going to find somebody who's going to deal with this foolish part of me? How am I going to work through that? A lot of women, they look at the situations that occurred and... um they look at the person who they were when they were single, right? And they say, oh, when I was single, I was so free. You know, I was uh, level-headed. I trusted myself. I knew who I was. You know, I was hot. I was this. I was getting all the attention. You know, I was very secure in myself. And what a lot of women don't realize is that as you mature and as you go through different phases, you have to adjust and adapt to those phases, right? You're now a mother. You have to find the wholeness after, while being a mother, you're a wife. You have to adapt and find the wholeness while being a wife. A lot of women feel like the only way that they can get themselves back is to retreat from their relationship and go back to the drawing board. 
That's not it. All the time. That's not it. A lot of times it's that you creating that spark in your relationship. I say it all the time. You know, women are the ones in the relationship who keep the flame going. They are the ones. Like it, don't like it. Men are responsive to how you behave. If you behave nasty or disrespectful, they don't want to deal with you. If you behave, you know, and, and you emphasize your wifely qualities, they will wife you. It's a dance. How you move and how they will move. How you move, how they move. But it starts with you. This is the first time anybody has ever heard Corey Hardrick speak about the entire situation. And to hear his level of emotions and to hear, you know, the effect of his mental health. And again, we don't know the cause. We don't know if it was something that he did, if something that she did. We don't know. All we know is that the first thing she said is that she graduated from her marriage. And we haven't heard her sing a different tune. We haven't heard nothing different. Now we hear this man, you know, years later, who's never spoken about it, talk about how broken he was. How hurt he was, how his family meant everything to him, his children meant everything to him. That life that they created together was everything to him. He's not getting any pity. There's nobody who says, oh, we feel sorry for him. Oh, we need to know the full story. It's all about, well, he could still be, you know, he could still be wrong and be acting like this. And again, when it was Jeannie Mai, everybody flocked to her side without hearing the entire story. All kind of foolishness came out about how he was, how she was, the foolishness they did. And then people started to sing a different tune. But it's never the same energy for men. It's never the same understanding. I loved when he said, like, you know, everybody think, oh, you know, he a man, he tough. He got it. He'll get through it. They never think about that, you know, men are real human beings. <laughs> men have emotions, too. I love that he spoke about it. Um, I do. I love that he he said something and, and he was very real about, you know, what it is that he felt in that time. Hopefully he can help some other people who went through that hurt or the pain or the situation of the, you know, only way I can define it is like the switch up. I'm not really sure exactly what happened again, um, but it was very heartbreaking to hear this. And I'm glad that he was strong enough to get through it, you know, and in, in terms of mental health and stuff like that, a lot of people don't hear the cries of men until something, you know, detrimental happens. And then they're like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe that nobody understood him. It's a harsh truth. I'd like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear you guys' opinions on this video. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And I will see you guys in the next one. Love you.